Oh, yeah, look at all that beautiful Permian limestone, all that sexy calcareous dust. See all that shiny shit in it? Look at all that, uh, all that gypsum. All the selenite crystals. Calcium sulfate. Ooh. Oh, Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, look, it feels like, feels like salt crystals. But that's gypsum. You want to go make some sheetrock? Huh? We'll go make some sheetrock later. God damn. You know what? I love you, Texas, but it's nice to be back in a state, i.e. New Mexico, where uh, trespassing on private property is not seen as a crime against humanity. You know? It's not such a goddamn social taboo. You got so much to offer. If only, if only you'd let people in. Yeah, you just got to make some more connections down there, you know? Make some more connections, charm some people a little bit more, get access to some of, uh, well, all that private land, which is mostly what the state is entirely composed of. What appears to be an intaginaceae with glabrous leaves that look like boot leather, that feel like boot leather. Oh, slap me around with that. Tie me up in a chair and slap me around. And make me recite all the, all the Zeric genera. The Zeric, the desert genera of Ramnaceae. Anyway, this appears to be a Nictag, a species of Nictaginaceae. If you can hear me over that wind. But it looks like the flowers have closed up for today. You know, probably because of the dry, desiccating winds and the hot sun. But it is, uh, it's interesting. Look at that form. You got a nice basal rosetta leaves. Some mild coralline leaves, at least on the ones back over there. And then, uh, and then of course, these flowers. The leaves are opposite when they come out, too, which is also a big giveaway for Nictaginaceae. It's a real beautiful, huh? It's a real pretty one. And apparently, uh, it can grow on these very harsh chips and soils. There's some very odd soil chemistry here, as well as, as, well as uh, the physical uh, nature of chips and soils. Very porous. Uh, is that, I mean, <laughs> well, they're porous when wet. Right now, it's bone dry and rock hard. Oh, yeah, nice yucca elata. The salt tree yucca. How about that? Okay, maybe you could hear me a little bit better, or maybe not. I don't know. Shit, let me all put my hand, my goddamn hand over the, uh, the mic right here. That wind was really something. It's kind of hilarious, though. At least I'm amused. You're probably pissed off because you can't hear. You had to turn your computer up, and it got real loud and obnoxious. But to me, it's amusing. So anyway, this plant, uh, Anulocollis gypsogena, gypsogenus, excuse me, is a pretty rare one. And anytime you see... Uh, plants growing out of pure gypsum, out of bare soils like this, you gotta wonder uh, something interesting's going on, especially on the gypsum, because like I said, gypsum presents a somewhat of a, a chemical obstacle for or, for plants, you know, in the chemistry, the high levels of uh, the high levels of calcium, and then of course uh, just the physical structure itself, you know. I mean, it's as you can see, uh, kind of makes this clay when it's dry, it's super hard, almost rocky, and then of course. It's very water soluble, and much more so than regular old limestone. So uh, it dissolves really easily, turns into this kind of you know gypsum, gypsum mud basically. And then of course the soil structure, uh, the soil kind of acts like a wick. The soil is very porous, and uh, you know I, it makes me wonder how how deep these roots go. They must be going pretty deep. And as you can see, this thing is very well adapted. Looking at those. Uh, the smooth uh, blue nature of these leaves. Again, it's like boot leather. These leaves are as thick as boot leather. This plant is very well adapted uh, to growing in the hot and dry, the bare exposure. I guess a common name for these is ring stem. Not sure if that's because of this, uh, this right there. It looks like it's just the, uh, looks like that's just the developing ovary. Yeah, how about that? And a nice uh, inferior ovary developing there. A fruit developing beneath this flower, which is now closed up. I'm guessing these probably, I mean, maybe they open at night, but they're not white. They're more of a pink color. So, you know, this is my first time seeing this juicy bastard. You know, but I, like I said, I could tell it was a nick tag. You know, looking at the opposite stems, or the opposite leaves, rather. Seeing those opposite leaves. And then, of course, once you get up and you can look and see those dry flowers, it just gives it away. That long, tubular curl. I guess this, some people used to place this in a genus Boerhavia, which is another wonderful uh, uh, genus in a family, Nictaginaceae. It's the four o'clock family. That's, you know, Mirabilis. Uh, that's Abronia. Abronia is another wonderful desert genus. Light, I seen it in Baja in, in February, just lighting up the goddamn ground, stretching for miles. You could smell it. 
it was so pungent and lovely just a real nice smell you know really calms down the horrible uh you know uh thoughts of just being alive in the world today <laughs> in the human world you know you know you think of all the insurance salesmen and lawyers and cops and you know bankers and accountants etc man i want to pick on the accountants they have it hard enough but you know you just think of these these people and these lifestyles that you know you find somewhat revolting no offense you just don't want having to do with the salesmen you know everybody just kind of looking for a pitch and you want to die and then you come out here and you see it you know a beautiful new plant you never seen before growing on some of the harshest soil during the hottest month of the year and it's just doing it's doing just fine and flowering a new little call is gypsy genus how about that excuse me hey, do you know where the marianos is you ever been to Falco's Pizza down there in California on Archer Avenue? What are you doing? You just hunting for lizards or what? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, there's that wind again. There's that wind. Oh. So anyway, maybe, the, you know what? Maybe these things, look at that beautiful jeep. Look at it. How do you see that you don't like that? Isn't that nice? So maybe these things do bloom. Maybe they're night bloomers. You know, I'm just used to night bloomers. I'm used to night bloomers being a white, you know, here's this guy, but even blooming or not, you know, and these are not blue, they're done, obviously, it's still a pretty remarkable plant, you know, you can see that, just that, that bright blue, glabrous foliage, who's studying this, huh, who's studying a new localis, giant ass leaves, oh. Here's, here's a Thelosperma, Asteraceae. He's not blooming off. But I've seen him, you know, I've seen him down the road a ways. He was going off. Look at this guy. Look at this barrage. I think it's a barrage. Look at those five united petals on those tiny flowers with a prominent calyx. But almost, almost succulent. Oh, this has totally got to be a barrage. Look at all them little hairs. Look at all those little trichomes on the leaves and the stem. And what the shit? Five united petals. Uh, that was nice. Some uh, old Caucasian man with a mustache. You know, he looked like he's watched too many Western movies. I uh, just stopped by and uh, told us uh, he was going to shoot our dogs if they chased cattle. Actually, he didn't tell me that because I wouldn't have let that slide. But he told my uh, much uh, more softer and gentler friend over there. We just kind of looked at him like he had issues, which he probably does. He probably needs to see a therapist. Most people I know do, including many of you watching this. No offense. Anyway, here's a, here's Nama Carnosa. It's that barrage I was telling you about earlier. Remember of a, the barrage in ACA? A lot of, you know, a lot of uh, barrages, whether it's the Kilia or Nama or any of them, many of them are adapted to this, uh, this harsh, unpleasant gypsophilic soil. This uh, gypsum soil which again is high in both sulfur and calcium so anyway this is a pretty rare one you can see it's, i mean it's literally it's a perennial it's just growing uh, completely out of this uh, this rock i don't even know where there's any soil down there so <laughs> just you know wait it's pretty amazing it's 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 hot it's the hottest month of the year this thing's flowering doing fine obviously adapted uh, to the hot and dry as well as adapted Remember, gypsum soils prevent obstacles to plants. So you find plants that are thriving on gypsum, especially bare, open gypsum like you got over there. You know, the yucca alata, I think, grows, a, it, it's not a gypsum endemic. It might be, it might be full of shit. The, the yucca is yucca alata, soap tree yucca. It's, I don't know if it's a gypsum endemic, but you see it on White Sands National Monument, which is all that gypsum. You see it doing pretty well on the gypsum, so it tolerates it. But what I was saying was any time that you see that, uh, you know, the the bare exposures, the hills and whatnot, a gypsum, uh, you got to go up and you got to see what's growing there because there's going to be some good stuff. Chihuahua Desert has a lot of gypsum. It's got a lot of limestone. And that's because there used to be an inland sea here, uh, both in the Cretaceous and then, of course, in the Permian. And I think, uh, I think even... Back in the Ordovician, too, maybe? I don't know, 40, 40 million years ago? Devonian? Something like that. But, uh, you know, it's intermittently, uh, you know, it's filled with sedimentary rocks. 
that have been laid down in a oceanic environments. You know, and it, that's where the gypsum comes from. Gypsum and limestone, both the heavily calcareous, that is calcium containing rocks. But again, you know, there's adaptations that uh, the gypsum loving plants, the gypsophiles show, you know, they could both, they could tolerate the, the high levels of uh, sulfur and high levels of calcium. And then uh, many others can just, uh, I think, you know, like I said, the physical properties of the soil are pretty interesting too. There's a guy named uh, Michael Moore, I believe, who's studying this. Not not the 400-pound guy that makes all the activist films. There's an actual uh, scientist studying a lot of the gypsum-loving plants. I goddamn, I love bare, I love bare exposed environments, and I love edaphic endemism, soil endemism. Really interesting shit. Creates new species of plants. It's all about adaptation and evolution. Anyway, there you go. Nama carnosa. There's those tiny little, tiny little borage flowers. If I can get this thing to stop. There you go. Nice little beautiful flower with a rather large calyx. Oh, there's a crab spider. Oh, he's trying to bite me. Oh no, he thinks I might be, he's, he thinks I might be a pound there. Look at that. Didn't even see that guy. These guys, you start looking at flowers, you start seeing a lot of crab spiders waiting to ambush uh, pollinators. Pretty devious, but it works, whatever. You know? They're like the, the predatory lenders of the insect world. All right, that's all I got. Go fuck yourself, bye. Oh, shit, I haven't thought about the gypsum soil since I was in the Nuevo Leon eight months ago. You know, looking at some of those rare cacti down there. Anytime you see those nice bear habitats, you got to stop and pull over. You know, if they're naturally bare, if it's not just the human tumor scraping the soil away for some absurd resource extraction project that makes you want to die or something like that. If it's a natural bear exposure, you want to pull over and just get a get a nice gander, you know, because you might find some good stuff. Because this, this kind of habitat, these kind of open exposed soils tend to create local endemics. They tend to create new species of plants. I guess that's not really the correct way to put it, but they, they cause new species to emerge. In other words, so you know, whether it's serpentine or whether it's gypsum or whether it's harsh goddamn limestone in Death Valley, you get the, you get a lot of cool endemics like this in Nulo Collis right there. Look at it. I just can't get over that beautiful blue color. You know, again, I want you to tie me to a chair and slap me around. And we'll do that. We could do it. You just figure out all the different genera of an interesting desert Ramnaceae. That's the Buckthorn family. Because I've been kind of hot on Ramnaceae lately. You know, Adolphia, Colubrina, Condalia. Karwinski, we could go through all of them. You just slap me around a couple times, maybe lather it up with a nice oil or something. I don't know. Go fuck yourself. How about that, huh?